Coach, you've been saying for a while that, you know, you've noticed this team getting better even when the results haven't always been there. Now that you're seeing the results, what are you seeing from your players? I mean, re a reward for hard work is always a win, but are you seeing that confidence growing now that they're seeing results? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt of that. I, I, I think you, um, you know, you saw it even in the games where we didn't win. Um, I think we've had, a, we've had a little bit of continuity, even though the other night we were still missing players. Um, you know, our, our core group is there. I think they figured out some roles, um, you know, and, and, you know, what they can do and how they can help the team. And then now I think the big step is, you know, figuring out how to win. And, you know, both games very, very similar. The last two that we've won, 29-29 at halftime, uh, five-point lead the opponent. Um, you know, we've been there a lot throughout the year. Um, and and usually we go the wrong way. And, and this last two games, we've made the plays. We've had the, the you know, the tough stops at the end and, and got the rebounds and made the free throws. So, um, you know, now now hopefully be happy and, and satisfied with that and continue moving forward. Um, you know, I still we still miss some open looks. Uh, I think once in a while we miss some people on some passes. We're still getting a feel of that, uh, where to look and who's open. Um, you know, if we can do that, obviously we can continue to take some steps. But, the you know, a tough, tough, tough challenge on Saturday at West Virginia. Um, I know Oklahoma had played really well and actually beat them recently, but West Virginia is uh, is playing at a high level, and um, you know it's amazing what Bob's been able to do, especially to win the, the consecutive wins on the road. And just one other thing, Coach, um, I do want to hear more about West Virginia, but are you guys even talking at all about you know the Big Twelve tournament and what you guys could accomplish there? Well, yeah, somebody asked about after the game. Obviously, we we just got to continue making improvement. If we make improvement, um, you know, we you can see that you, you get a chance to get wins. So that that's the most important thing. Stay focused on the task. Keep keep improving. Uh, you know, hopefully stay healthy, get to the get through the season. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's you know, we just showed we can beat Oklahoma, who's um, you know, one of the top teams in the league. Uh, you know, I thought we competed with Kansas. If we make a few shots, um, you know, it, it, and, and you get to March, anything can happen. And uh, in this crazy, crazy year, um, you know, there's going to be somebody come out of nowhere that, that has success at the end. And, but, you know, we just – but we got to worry about today's practice and being ready and, 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 and continue to make the progress that – uh, that I hope and I hope they want to make. Uh, that's the biggest thing. It's not what I want. It's more what they want and where their their mindset is. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Thank you. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Hey, Bruce. What's the uh, injury report looking like right now, heading into this next one? Well, our, I went down to the training room yesterday afternoon and, uh, you know, we were off. Uh, it's our day off because it's a Tuesday game. you got to give the day off. But, you know, there were, I would say half our guys were in there. Um, but, you know, I, Dejuan said it didn't hurt as much as it did after TCU um, or Kansas games. So that was positive. Uh, Antonio said he's, he's able to walk without the pain. Um, you know, now can he run and jump and that, you know, without pain, we'll just, we'll see today if, if we progress him a little bit. Um, you know, Rudy, Rudy thought that he's going to try to give practice a go. Um, you know, it, what happened last week, he just got hit wrong on that hand. It's something that's bothered him from the beginning of the year and, uh, it made it tough. So, you know, if he can, uh, you know, make, some progress and shoot the basketball and not get hit again. Uh, maybe we can get him back. Uh, Carlton's probably, uh, it would be Iowa State before we have a chance to probably see him again uh, after some therapy and rest here. And uh, when you look at West Virginia, obviously they made uh, life miserable for you guys on offense in the first meeting. 
what's the key to counteracting that and not turning the ball over so much in a rematch? Yeah, I, I mean, I talked with the staff uh, yesterday. We met, and then I talked – actually, Tremaine uh, Henderson as a scout, we talked this morning again. And, you know, for me, it's going to be the start of the game, uh, dealing with their pressure, their, their denial defense, um, and then the starts of possessions. I think if we can get into the start of the possession, uh, you know, now, you know, it's that team that's fighting you early, but if you can break that first line of defense, you can get, you get inside and, and cause some damage. So uh, those, those are, you know, it's, it's, it's easy, easier said than done. Um, and, but the other part is, you, you know, we had, obviously we had 28 turnovers and, and I, I said that, you know, if you remember that game, we had a, if we cut it to eight and we had a wide open three, you know, if we make that thing, it's five. And instead they go down and make back to back threes. So uh, our defense was pretty solid and we, we gave ourselves a chance uh, despite the turnovers. So if we can, you know, obviously cut those turnovers back, stay solid on defense, uh, get into some offense early and, uh, you know, who knows what can happen. I, you know, we thought we might catch them in the middle of the sandwich between the two Baylor games. Uh, they changed that uh, tonight's game. They uh, canceled it. And, you know, I, and again, I'm not complaining. I, I understand it. Uh, you want to, you want to protect the athletes and, and, you know, that's the most important thing with the number of games in this stretch and to have those teams have a chance to finish strong. But, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll, they, they just came off a two game road trip. I'm sure they'll be ready to play and they got Baylor on the, on the horizon. And uh, here's a question we haven't gotten to ask you much this year. How has your ha team handled winning over the last 48 hours? <laughs> I just think they felt good. They, you know, again, they, this group, uh, you know, they've been very resilient. Uh, uh, they want to do well when we've lost, they've come in and watch film when we won, you know, they came in and they were around and watched film. I, I, I think I saw every guy yesterday. Uh, obviously a lot of them were in the training room, but uh, you know, I, I said it the other day, I told them three weeks ago, I don't want the season to end because one, they're a good group to coach Two, uh, they've made improvement and, and you wish it would have been a little sooner, but um you know, it, it's at least they're getting the, you know, their, their diligence and, uh, you know, it's, it's getting, it, it's paying off for them. And, and I'm, I'm happy for them. And hopefully we can continue this over the last, uh, last stretch of the season. I think they, you know, they should, you know, we got to get there, but, you know, we'll, we'll be close to completing our entire schedule, which uh, obviously a lot of people have not done that. So, but we still, you know, I, we still got to get, get through tomorrow's test and next week and the following week after that. But uh, they've been pretty disciplined and diligent about taking care of their business. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, next question of Michael Goins. Yeah, Bruce, early in the season, if you shot 38.5% against a top 10 team, you probably wouldn't have much of a chance. You mentioned resiliency. How much has that grown? And uh, progressed over the course of the season. Oh, it's it's tremendous. Uh, you know, and just I don't know if it's confidence or what it is, but uh, you know that mental toughness of when the other team makes a run or things aren't going perfect against you to keep keep grinding. We get up thirty eight thirty one. They go on a run. Um, you know, uh, a month ago, you know that we probably would have been it would have went the other way, and they would have you know, gone even a few weeks ago, it happened against Kansas. Um, you know, we weren't winning, but it was a close game. Uh, you know, so that uh, execution, the discipline, the mental toughness, all those things have made, we've made some strides there. And, and I hope it, it continues against a team that, that just spanked us, to be honest, uh, you know, about, and that's what's five, six weeks ago. Uh, obviously we were a little shorthanded at that time, but, uh, now we're going to have to, you know, see if we're up to the task uh, on Saturday. You've missed some looks, but they've been open looks. Uh, you got shot almost sixty percent against TCU from two point range. How much has the quality of shots increased over this stretch? 
I, I mean, it's it's gotten way better in the last month. And uh, running offense, passing the ball, moving the ball. And we still, once in a while, you know, every fifth, sixth possession, we'll get somebody to, you know, hold that ball. But uh, I think we've started to learn when we move that basketball, um, it, 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 we get better results. And, and the other guys get – opportunities and and we get it inside I think that's the biggest thing uh, and that's what we tried to, I really emphasized with uh, Antonio when he had that double double a few weeks ago not one play was run for him and he still so he played off everyone else doing their jobs and so it, it's that's when we're trying to make Selton Dejuan some of these other guys understand you still can score and get shots <laughs> And good shots if, if you get to the right spots and everybody else, uh, you know, does what they're supposed to do and move the basketball. And speaking of open looks, uh, Luke Kasupke, what's it going to take to get him on track and what's going uh, on? Yeah, he had a couple of wide open ones, but you got to give him credit. He did, the, you know, he missed a couple and he still shot another one. And uh, so he's got it. He's, I think the thing that surprised me in this, and again, uh, you know, we we stuck him into into the fire without much preparation, and uh, you know he's 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 just had to learn as it goes. He's he's shown a lot of toughness, uh, a little spunk, a little fight that I, I didn't know was in there. And um, I you know we we recruited him because we we thought he was intelligent. We uh, you know great kid, very very determined. We you know we expected him to. He was came in as a pretty good shooter, um, and uh, you know he just, you know he hasn't been able to get those down. But uh, you know we he came in yesterday and we all teased him a little bit. But uh, you know he it it says something about him coming into office and wanting to watch and see what he did. Uh, so that that's a positive step for him and not. When you don't make a shot, you know, it's easy to, you know, I'm not coming in, I'm not going around. But he was there. He's, and again, he's got some toughness and uh, that a little spunk that I, I didn't know he had. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, next question to Todd Lebo. Hey, Coach, we're almost through this regular part of the season. I wonder if you could just – I know you don't probably sit and watch basketball every night because you got your own job to do, but generally when you watch college basketball this year, where's the level of play? I've heard a lot of people say it's kind of tough to watch these games. The officiating is a little uneven. It's, you know, the level of play is maybe not there. What are your thoughts about where college basketball is right now as, as a product to watch and, and be a part of? Um, I would not say it's, it's – uh, I don't know the word exact. It's not, uh, uh, you know, because we've all had interruption. Uh, I, I mean, you even saw it with Baylor the other night. I mean, they, you know, there's a few teams, them, Gonzaga, you know, that just sharp, good, crisp basketball. And, and now you get interruptions and, you know, with the COVID or injuries or whatever it might be. And it, it, people just don't realize it. You, you, don't make that up. I, I, again, I talked to Tom Izzo. He had a, you know, finally got a couple wins, but they came off of COVID with, you know, some veteran guys. And, and you know, it, it, they, well, I think they lost three in a row, four out of five, something like that. I don't know what it was, but, you know, it, it's, it's hard. So you don't have that. And then the, I think the officiating, it's, it's been hard on them. Uh, again, I, um, you know, we need officials and we need, they're they're part they're an important part of the game, and uh, you know they miss their summer work. They miss the exhibitions. They miss and now they're traveled. They've been disrupted. I talked to one of our league guys the other day. You know he was stuck in the with the snow and had games canceled. So he's sitting in a hotel by himself for two three days. It it just has not been normal, and it's been hard. It's hard on everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's just not been a perfect season. There's no doubt about that. Uh, next question to Tim Fitzgerald. 
Morning, Coach. Um, I asked you after the game Tuesday how much better your defense was. After going back and watching the film, what were your assessments of defense and particularly Selton McGill? Yeah, and I, and I, you know, I, Creve scored, still scored points, but he had, it, it took him 18. Oh my. I think he, uh, Selton, you know, he, Selton had seven on the play hard chart. And uh, we might have been through seven games and he might not have had seven at the beginning of the season. So he, his progress with learning to play hard, taking on this role as a defensive stopper. We've always said he's been good on the ball, but I think now he's taking pride in it. And, um, you know, he, he's, he's done a great job. And it always – your defense, if you've got a, a stopper, to, which we've been very, very fortunate, um, you know, from Barry to Xavier to Dean, people – I don't think people realize how good Dean was on defense. Um, you know, when you have that, it, it helps your defense, especially your one-on-one -on -one defense. And, uh, you know, I, I, there's no doubt. And part of it, too, we're getting back on defense. The first time Oklahoma scored all those uh, transition points. So that's your, you know, start of your defense, getting back that transition D. Then you got to be we're, – we're doing a good job of staying compact. Uh, you know, fighting over ball screens has gotten way better. Uh, the big guys getting on, on their line, uh, you know, we're, it's, it's night and day. I mean, it's, it's so far advanced from where we were, uh, but, you know, the, but it definitely helps that what Selton's done because when you can disrupt, uh, you know, the, the main guy or get him out of rhythm, uh, it, it always helps. There's no doubt. I think the other thing, I, I don't know if I brought up to you guys, but I know I brought up to our staff, Early in the season, other guys on the team always hurt us. And, and now the other guys aren't having career days. And that's, that's important. So, um, Follow up, and <clears throat> I, I found this interesting. Of course, if you hold your opponent to fewer points, your chance to win goes up. But you've held opponents to fewer than 60 points six times this year, the last three games included, and you're five and one in those games. Is that you've only won two games that the opponent's gone over 60. Uh, I mean, is that a pretty clear, almost like a barrier there where your chances go way down if the, the opponent goes over 60? Yeah, and, and I, I think I joke with you guys after uh, Kansas, and I called Coach Southwell uh, late at night, and I said, what do we got to do against TCU? And he said, Coach, didn't you just, you know, he said, didn't you just watch the game? We got to make, we got to score. We got to make baskets. And I just said to him, I'll be honest, I think it's the other way. We got to stop them. And because, you know, we just, we haven't scored. You know, I don't, I, I told our guys that's not changing right now. That changes in the off season, your, you know, your habits and getting in the gym and all that stuff. Um, you know, so there, there's no doubt it, it gives you a chance. Um, and, and, it, and, you know, I hope they, they feel good about it. I hope they have some pride with it. And, uh, I, you know, if we can continue this, you know, this last stretch of the season, it, it gives us a chance to, uh, you know, be competitive and, and find ways to get wins, too. There's no doubt about that. Thanks, Coach. Yep. I would tell you guys that when we do shoot in practice, we actually make shots. And, and <laughs> I, I don't know what it is in games, but – yeah, because I we'll we'll get a lot of shoot shots up in practice, and uh, they'll make them. But we get the games. I'm not sure what that happens, but you know, at least at least we're finding we've made some progress. Okay, we'll do one last question to Michael Goins. Hey Bruce, I think uh, McCall Maween was a little bit underappreciated for his interior defense and his hedges. How far is Davion Bradford come in that category? I think I mentioned it the other day uh, to you guys, uh, the, the big guys, their mobility, getting up there, being in the ball screen, understanding where, not only being there, but how to defend that. And, and I, I said many times, Mac was one of the best ball screen defenders in the country, if not the best. He was so active. He would be up the line. We, when we wanted to hedge, he could hedge. When we, we wanted to be a flat hedge, he could do that. He, you know, he, he could do, he learned those concepts. And, uh, I think those guys are starting to understand uh, where to be. And we, you know, we played some pretty good guards and we've been able to contain them. Um, 
and not let them get those clear open pathways to the to the basket. So, uh, and then and along with that, our other help has has been better to so if you get an another guy in there helping that makes it easier for the uh for the big guy to to be at his line and recover and get back to his man and from an overall perspective how much more aggression is your team playing with well we had 45 on our play hard chart and that was a uh, season high and you know I, I told our guys we would need a special effort and special production to beat a top team it's, and it's going to have to be the same thing on saturday but um you know we had so many guys that you know it started with the play hard uh days one had 11 mike had 10 selton had seven i joked about that uh nigel had seven davion had six i mean those are those are big time numbers uh you know we're much playing much harder more aggressive our defense is better uh and then slowly but surely our offense has made some strides thank you Bruce. Okay, we'll do one last question to Grant Flanders. Hey, Coach, I just wanted to ask uh, how excited you guys are about Dean Wade and his, you know, getting starts in the NBA. Now. Yeah, yeah. I texted him last night. I, you know, it's it's funny because, um, you know, our our f former guys when Dean first started coming to campus and playing, uh, you know, when he played, you know. With you know when he had first summer, our former guys said, "Coach and these guys, you know, were professionals." They said Dean can be an NBA player, and uh, along the way, I, I sat many individual meetings with Dean, and I'd say, "You know, what's your goal?" And he said, "Well, I just want to you know help our team be good." I said, "I'm asking about your goal." And 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 he would never say it, but I would always say, "Dean, you are an NBA player." And you can, you belong, you belong there. You're good enough and you got to believe it. And uh, that was my text message to him last night. I said, you belong here, bud. Uh, now take advantage of the opportunity. So it was, uh, you know, he had, he had the big dunk the other night, you know, got on a lot of social media after that, maybe sports center even, I don't know, but cause I had a lot of people reach out about it. And obviously to start and get 11 and six, uh, Really, really happy and proud of him. And then Xavier Steed had a couple, he had a big game yesterday, I think 16 and six and four, something like that in the G League. And I think he's, he's had pretty good production, back-to-back -back, uh, pretty good games. So always happy when, when those guys have success.